Good morning. It's my great pleasure to be participating in this celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Office of Research on Women's Health. And I'm going to be talking about NCCIH's focus on the health of women. We know that uh, complementary and integrative health approaches are very uh, used very uh, extensively by women. 30%, 37% of women compared with 29% of men uh, use some a form of complementary uh, health. Uh, and so what are these types of approaches? Um, we describe them as being in sort of three broad categories of dietary, psychological, and physical uh, uh, therapies and practices uh, that include things like, for example, um, um, nutritional supplements, probiotics, or uh, meditation, mindfulness-based stress reduction, or uh, physical therapies such as uh, manual therapies. And of course, there's overlap between these categories. For example, yoga is a combination of psychological and, and physical component. And um, we know that uh, if we ask uh, why, what is the reason why people use these types of approaches, um, a lot of people say that they're using it for general health, wellness, well-being, but a certain uh, percentages uh, of the population uh, use them for specific health conditions. And what are these health conditions? Um, when we ask specifically, we see that overwhelmingly uh, pain is, is a uh, uh, back pain, for example, neck pain, joint pain, and other musculoskeletal pain are the four uh, specific health conditions that are most frequently cited by, um, by individuals for their use of these complementary interventions. And uh, we know that uh, women tend to have disproportionately greater amounts of both pain and high impact chronic pain. So this is important uh, for, for the health of women that we understand how best to, uh, to uh, encourage and, and the, the rational use of these therapies, that we do proper research to understand, are these therapies uh, actually useful? Uh, are they effective? Are they safe? And when we look for our portfolio uh, on research that relates to women's health, we can see that uh, pain is very well represented as well as, as well as other topics such as uh, general health, well-being, stress, et cetera. So uh, talking about pain first, um, we are very fortunate that we have been able to um, contribute, uh, participate in a very uh, important HEAL initiative, which stands for Health uh, to End Addiction Long Term. Um, this is a trans NIH effort that is, you, that is uh, aimed at uh, addressing both the opioid uh, epidemic and also the pain epidemic, because we know that there is a lot of uh, a very uh, extensive uh, problem with pain in this country that uh, unfortunately all too often results in the um, prescription of opioids. And so um, NCCIH has participated in a, uh, has been leading actually a uh, program called PRISM, which is, uh, uh, stands for Pragmatic and Implementation Studies for the management of pain to reduce opioid prescribing. These are non-pharmacological approaches. These are examples here, for example, using uh, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, mindfulness stress reduction, acupuncture, and uh, telehealth, for example, uh, in, uh, in, in rural communities, as well as uh, guided relaxation. So um, these are kind of examples of studies that we've been able to uh, fund through the HEAL initiative. Another important area is uh, natural products. And a lot of people use natural products, uh, many of them of uh, people in, in, in the hope of, of helping with uh, pain. And it's very important that we understand both uh, the potential use of these products, but also their safety and potential interactions uh, with uh, uh, medications, for example, or other natural products that people might be might be taking. So for that uh, aim, uh, we, we uh, held a workshop uh, back in uh, 2019 that was in collaboration uh, with uh, NINDS and, and ANCATS. And uh, this was a very, uh, very good work workshop in that it really led to a, a program that is, again, con in collaboration with uh, not only NIDS and NCATS, but also NCI, um, to basically mine both electronic databases and also uh, natural product libraries um, that already exist that have extensive collections of natural products that can then be screened for infinitypic assays 
uh, in high throughput screening for effectiveness in uh, targets that could be um, for analgesia. And so this has led to a very nice uh, uh, collaborative program uh, to uh, very uh, explore uh, and discover uh, new uh, potential analgesics that derive from natural products. Now, cannabinoids is all, are also very uh, much at the front of people's minds because they're used a lot. People use cannabinoids, especially uh, products such, such as CBD uh, that is available uh, many over the counter. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we understand uh, if, it, how effective these are and how safe these are. And so in 2019, uh, we made 11 awards to explore pain relieving properties and mechanisms of actions of, of, of the many different compounds that are uh, in cannabis, including uh, cannabinoids, minor terpenes. And uh, so this is, again, just gives you an idea of the portfolio and, 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 and our, our, um, our, the breadth of our research in pain. But as I mentioned before, pain is not the only reason, right, where people, like people use uh, complementary and integrative health approaches, general health and, and well-being is extremely important. In some cases, really, uh, in some, for example, for yoga, or um, uh, it, it was overwhelmingly the reason why people use this, uh, this, inter this, 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 these practices or meditation, for example. It's for promoting uh, health and well-being. And so we need to understand, first of all, how do you do research uh, on well-being? Um, we are very much geared towards understanding uh, disease, right? Uh, and we have a lot of sophisticated measurements of symptoms and, 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 uh, uh, and, and disease uh, biomarkers, for example. What are the biomarkers of, of well-being and health? We need to understand that, right? So we had a roundtable in 2018 on emotional well-being, um, and uh, this uh, was, uh, uh, resulted uh, again, in uh, a, a collaboration, uh, in, in the, we funded five research networks um, that will be uh, launched in December 2020, looking at uh, ontology of emotional well-being, how do you characterize it, how do you measure it, mechanisms, biomarkers, uh, prevention, and also technology and outcome, outcomes measure development. So this is, again, an effort that is very sort of uh, cross-disciplinary and that will help in further the research on this very important topic. Another exciting initiative that we have, again, another uh, collaboration this time between NIH, the Kennedy Center, and the National Endowments for the Art. Arts um, is the Sound Health Initiative. Um, this is a goal of this initiative, which was uh, spearheaded by Dr. Francis Collins, about is to really increase our understanding of how music affects health uh, with uh, emphasis on basic neuroscience and also potential uh, clinical applications. And just like, like a, as many uh, of these other initiatives, we really started with a workshop uh, that really brought together an amazing uh, collaboration. This was uh, back in uh, 2017 uh, between, again, the Kennedy Center, the NEA, and many uh, music therapy professional and advocacy groups. Um, there was a, uh, uh, Dr. Collins participated here with um, Renee Fleming, who's a well-known uh, soprano who is very active in this area of promoting the understanding of music and, uh, and its use in, in, uh, in for promoting health. And uh, this panel, uh, Sound Health Research, uh, resulted in a, uh, a, an initiative that we are now, uh, we have funded three grants now in this area, evaluating, for uh, ex example, evaluating the impact of singing uh, interventions on the markers of cardiovascular health in older patients, uh, the effect of music-based intervention on neurodevelopment and pain response in preterm infants, and also using uh, self-generated rhythmic cues to enhance gait and Parkinson's disease. So this is just the beginning. We're really excited about uh, how we may better understand uh, how, uh, how music and other arts, for, for example, uh, visual arts, uh, can, be, um, can be used uh, for promoting health. Another area that we're very much interested in is the connections between the, the, the mind and the body. Um, one of the areas where we have developed this is in the concept of interoception. Um, this is the, uh, a very important uh, uh, area of science that is really in need of further development. And so we started it with a, uh, a workshop uh, in collaboration when you see all of these institutes. Uh, this was sponsored by the um, uh, Neuroscience Blueprint Initiative. And what it did 
So what is interoception? It's really the processes by which our body senses, interprets, integrates, and regulates signals from within itself. So how does your brain, for example, perceive when you are hungry or thirsty or tired? Um, what, are the, what are the signals that come from our body that the brain then has to, the nervous system has to integrate? This is, this is really a very fascinating area that has a lot of uh, bearing, our understanding of this has a lot of bearing in our understanding of, for example, meditation or yoga, where you really focus on your breathing. How is it that you sense that? And what information does it give you? And what can you do about it? So um, this workshop uh, is, uh, was, was uh, 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 in 2019 and explored various aspects of the neural circuitry underlying these dy dynamic interception, uh, interactions, the interoceptive processes associated with certain diseases and disorders, modulating these processes potentially with the different interventions and therapies, and also developing the methodology and technology to better uh, do this research. And so we have an RFA that is out. Uh, the applications are due soon, December 18th. And the goal is to, in to enhance our fundamental understanding of interoception with a specific focus on determining the function of these neural circuits. So I've talked to uh, uh, just, uh, this is just a snapshot summary of, that I gave you of some of the you know, exciting initiatives that we've been invo involved in. But I I'm just wanna finish with this slide that shows you how this fits into the bigger picture. Um, NCCIH is, uh, we are in, in the middle of developing our new strategic plan and what we're focusing on is whole person health research. How does all this fit? Well, uh, we, we know that um, whole, the whole person health, we think about this as a two axis. So on the vertical axis, axis here, we have the integration of the sort of biopsychosocial elements uh, as well as the environment because the environment is very important. Of course, we know our physical environment as well as our social environment it's very important in, 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 in determining uh, our health. And within the physiological uh, domains, you have all of these different systems, neural, respiratory, cardiovascular, digestive, et cetera, that need to interact in that. The interoception example I gave you is just an example of that. And then on the horizontal axis, you have what we call the uh, bidirectional health disease continuum. We know that people are traveling along this continuum back and forth. It's not just one way towards disease and death. You can go back towards health. And uh, we think that a lot of these pharmacological and non-pharmacological interventions can be very helpful in helping people to, uh, to go back in, and, and restore their health after they've been sick uh, or if they have a chronic illness to help them gain, uh, uh, regain uh, health and improve. And this happens on the different planes, on the physiological plane, as well as in the social and psychological a plane. And symptom management, of course, is part of this at every step. So managing pain um, is part of this, of this continuum. So I hope that uh, this kind of gives you an idea of uh, the exciting, uh, some of the exciting initiatives that we're developing. And of course, all of this is relevant to the health of women. Um, and uh, we really look forward to uh, uh, further discussions with uh, ORWH on, on how we can further uh, collaborate on, on many of these initiatives. Thank you.